the deputy mayor of the city. She just finished her term as a as the mayor pro tem. Her name is uh, Councilwoman Angela Lawson. Angela has lived most of her life in Colorado. A daughter of an Air Force veteran, Angela lived abroad and in many cities within the United States. Angela holds a bachelor's degree in political science from the University of California at Berkeley and three master's degree, degrees in the field of public administration and social science from the University of Colorado at Denver and the public policy from the Georgetown University. Throughout her career, Angela has worked in various industries from technology, finance, and law, all of which have given her valuable private sector experience. But it was her passion in serving the citizenry and the community that moved her away from the private sector to a career in public service. For the 12 years Angela has worked at the Colorado, for the past 12 years Angela has worked at the Colorado Secretary of State's office in the capacity of the manager of the lobbyist division. In addition, Angela is an at-large council member and served as mayor for the for the city of Aurora in 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, our councilwoman at large, Angela Lawson. Retrieval of information that this country is all about. Uh, our next guest that I want to have this honor of and privilege of introducing today is uh, Dr. Marilyn Chipman. I can show you work today uh, yeah, so that we'll have a full glare of her, a full view of her. As the daughter and the granddaughter of ministers of the gospel, Dr. Marilyn Chipman is a third generation member of a strong family of faith. She was married for 32 years to the late elder Aaron B. Chipman, a powerful pastor, evangelist, and preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. She's also the joyful mother of three children and grandmother of nine, all of whom are serving the Lord. She has spoken to church, church groups around the nations and overseas, across lines of race, age, or denomination. Her message is always the same, salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. Apart from her ecclesiastical uh, uh, positions and uh, what she has done as a pastor and pastor's wife, I want to talk a little bit about her professional standing in terms of uh, a place in the academia. Professionally, Dr. Chipman holds the BA degree in sociology and psychology from the University of Denver and a master's degree, MBA degree in early childhood education from California State University. She has a PhD degree in education. Uh, she's a professor of she was a professor of education at the Metropolitan State University of Denver and she's a recognized educational sociologist. Amongst other accomplishments, he served as the area coordinator of the Early Childhood Education Program, assistant to the director of the Teachers of Colorado Program, diversity coordinator for the Rocky Mountain Teachers Education Collaborative, co-chair of the Colorado Commission on Higher Education Statewide Faculty to Faculty Articulation Conference, and so many other degrees and so many accolades in the academia. Please join me to welcome once again Dr. Marilyn Chipman. The last but not the least is our spiritual father, the bishop who has just led us in prayers. Bishop Philip Pola is one of the most respected clergymen in the United States of America. He 
has served in so many capacities, both in adversarial capacities to public and private institutions, to the government, and to the state of Colorado. I'd like to end by saying that he is my spiritual father, and uh, he came to Colorado the year I was born. He came to Colorado in 1959. <laughs> that makes him very, very qualified to be somebody that will connect with here. So without much ado, please can you join me to welcome this program. Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Pastor Vincent, for that great recognition of the dignitaries. He has said it all. So the next item of uh, the agenda is welcome address, and this will be taken by our own able and dynamic president of IIM, Ambassador Dr. You know, had a lot of sleepless nights for this to happen. So also our great coordinator, Dr. Kemi, also works so hard. Let's give her also a round of applause. She Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocol duly observed. Opening speech of the President and Chairman of the Council, Institute of Information Management, IIM Africa, during the IIM 11th induction and investiture ceremony, and made in IIM Africa, United States of America induction at Double Tree Hilton Hotel, Denver, Aurora, Colorado on May 5th, 2018. On behalf of the government and the board of directors of the Institute of Information Management, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all and also cordially to the 11th induction and investiture ceremony, which is also the official maiden induction ceremony in the United States. Your presence is a credit to IIM, an exceptional institute developed to promote the highest standards of excellence, integrity, competence, and service in the information management industry in Africa. By being part of today's ceremony, you are conforming to the ethics and values of IIM to becoming an embodiment of everything that is good and principled about professional excellence and education. I sincerely applaud you all for taking time out to be here. Today, we're in an exciting time for information management and technology at the heart of many major initiatives and policies in both public and private sectors. The Institute of Information Management is set to position Africa not just to be globally competitive across all sectors, but to be a continent with distinctive advantage manifested in an unwavering acceptance of creative technologies that are laced with homegrown solutions. There have been some deliberations as to whether information management is relevant to developing countries in Africa, but this debate has been resolved with a clear established answer. The question has become not whether but how information management can be beneficial. Information management has a high potential values across all sectors in both public and private enterprises and at multiple levels from software businesses in rural and urban areas, for example, relationship between the kinds of organizations like investors, governments, IT vendors, consultants, and so on and kinds of processes, e.g. planning, e-development, data analysis, and technology-centric innovations, such as recent interest in digital currencies for, developing, for development of existing and emerging economies. 
the increasing visibility and importance of information management in Africa is a reflection to some extent by a growth in the information systems from a conceptual view of how to study information management in developing countries and from ideas derived from our own fields and wealth of experience. Without information management, certain knowledge, scalability, sustainability, and integration of some projects are limited. As a result, recent developments have shown information management as the technological innovation that has ultimately moved beyond the micro to the macro level, thus expediting developmental change in Africa. Particularly in countries, information management is viewed as beneficial for provision of services that can reduce the digital crack or otherwise discrete values between rural and urban areas in Africa. Although some learned fellows argue that the problems of civil wars, corruption and poor governance, as well as weak economy and institutional performance are due mainly to ineffective information management. These observations suggest that information management education must be accorded serious attention in the economic development initiatives in African countries in the coming years. As we all continue in our lives, let us take information management with confidence, knowing that we have achieved great heights and are equipped with the necessary tools to take control of our environment. Permit me at this point in time to highlight the vision and mission of the Institute of Information Management. Our vision is to be recognized and respected as the premier information management institute in Africa with influence on information management trends and educational requirements, driving the development of competent professionals for the ultimate recognition of information management as a professional field in various organizations globally. The Institute of Information Management mission is to ensure that information management professionals are abreast of current and future challenges associated with managing information assets in an era of social, mobile, cloud, big data, and to develop and maintain a premier information management institute which consistently achieves high standard certification, competence, and research in delivering values to its membership globally. It is our desire to develop and propagate the industry in Africa. We are in the right track, and if we can continue our journey seriously and dedicatedly through this path, we shall surely achieve the goals. The primary need, however, are skilled manpower, legislations, standards, and government support, of which we are working on realizing in record time. This event is the culmination of an enormous collective effort which began in 2010 when the ideas of having the Institute of Information Management across the globe was conceived. From that moment, many institutions and individuals contributed in one form or another towards the goals and objectives of the Institute. May I use this opportunity to express my appreciation and that of the Institute to Dr. Adi Kemi Emi for her enthusiasm, assistance, tremendous amount of work she has put into the organization of this event. The Institute is indeed proud of you. <laughs> Finally, we shall be inducting new members of our great institute into various membership grades. The Fellow of the Institute of Information Management is reserved as a sign of recognition, especially set aside for personalities who have made substantial contribution to the development of information management and technology profession, its practices, or the Institute of Information Management itself, and honorary fellows conferred on all the professionals with background outside of information management and technology field, but are identified as having made significant contributions that impact on, on the profession and the society of the Information Management Institute. May I also use this opportunity to offer my heartiest congratulations to all our inductees and to please be guided that your induction 
as certified members of our great institute has imposed on you the challenges of having to export exhibit a high sense of integrity, immaculate in character, professional in service, be abreast of trends and uphold a high ethical and professional standards in your practice at all times. Therefore, I implore you to strive to do yourself, the information management profession and your family proud always. A very big thank you to all our distinguished guests and speakers for honoring our invitation to grace this special occasion. Thanks and remain blessed. First of all, I want to say welcome to the city of Aurora and welcome to Colorado. Um, as you know, Aurora is a very special place. We have, it's one of the most diverse cities in our state. In our schools, we have over 140 different languages spoken. And that's why we take the city of Aurora, as far as our community, um, and our immigrant community, and our people that come from different parts of the country very seriously. And we very, very, we, we celebrate them. And we celebrate what they're doing in our community because they do significant things. This, coming to this, to the um, in, uh, Institution of Information Management, this is a special ceremony for our city because you're having it here, first of all, in Aurora. Second of all, you're bringing some aspects to our city, and I hope that you will actually use your ideologies in our city. As you look at the city of Aurora, many of you who are not from here, and you go and tour the city, Look at all of the aerospace that we have here. Look at all the commerce that comes here. Look at all the technology that we have here in this city and in this state. And the importance of data management is going to be trivial and important to understand so as we connect people globally and as we connect our businesses and our governments globally as well. And what you bring to our city through your ideologies through this particular organization is going to be important for everyone in the United States and particularly in the state of Colorado and in Aurora. So I thank you for being here. I thank you for having this here. Um, the city of Aurora is happy that you will, that you're here and you're having this ceremony here. The state of Colorado is happy that you're having this ceremony here as well. So I want to say welcome. Congratulations to the inductees. I'm, I mean, I wish Mayor Hogan could be here to speak. He would be very proud to have you hosted in our city. And so I will make sure that he sees all of the pictures, and I will make sure that we publicize this in the city of Aurora. So thank you so much. Professor. Metropolitan State University. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for the invitation to take part in this prestigious event to the president and chairman of the board to all of the dignitaries who are here, I give respect to each of you in your designated official role and title. I want to thank uh, Pastor Vincent Omega for his gracious introduction and for extending the honor to be here on today. Mr. Omega sent me the website address for the uh, Institute of Information Management Africa. And as I browsed through it, through the various tabs that were there, it became very evident to me that this is a signal moment for the city of Aurora, Amen. for the city of Denver, for the state of Colorado, and for this region of the United States of America as a whole. And so as a representative of the Rocky Mountain region, if you have not had a chance to see our beautiful snow-capped Rocky Mountains, 
Don't miss the opportunity maybe to get up in them. Uh, you'll go up pretty high, but the altitude, you'll be able to take it. But it's a representative of my own beloved Rocky Mountain region, of the academic community here. I want to welcome you as an academic institution to welcome you to join us in preparing students of every race, every ethnicity, every creed, every socioeconomic standing to enter and become successful in their chosen career path. Your students, both young and those who may be older, will become leaders in the profession of information management. I think you should give yourself a hand for that. In the highly technological, far advanced society in which we live, where worldwide communication takes place almost at the blink of an eye, the processing and management of information is an integral part of the very things that impact our lives daily. Every occupation in the 21st century uses information management within its own system be it medicine or science or education, if it's a realtor, if it's a hotel management, if it's someone in the field of entertainment or even in sports, they all need you. They all need information management. The average man, woman, boy or girl who you may meet along the way is completely oblivious to the all-pervasive presence of information management. Just as we are told that a fish is unaware, is oblivious of the water in which it swims. Yet it's suddenly every aspect of our lives that is driven by some form of information management was stopped, we would have difficulty in adjusting to that new normal. Actually, it would not be a new normal. It would be a return to a level of society and functioning that would be reminiscent of some time in the distant past, and we're not going back that way. So therefore, I want to applaud you, President. I want to applaud all of the members of the board. I want to applaud all of you who are arrayed in your regalia on this event, on this day. I want to applaud you for your commitment to ensuring the recognition of information management as a professional field in various organizations. I'm going to quote, if you will allow me, from your very own website. I believe I just heard you say these same words. Your stated mission is to develop and maintain a premier information management institution which consistently achieves high standards, certification, competence, and research in delivering value to its membership globally. I am so pleased and happy that in your global mission, you also came to Colorado. I am most impressed by your use of the word premier because it lets everyone know unequivocally that you have set and will adhere to a standard of excellence. Give yourself a And so I say to you, I say to all of you, may you succeed in your endeavors in the United States of America. May you succeed beyond your highest expectations. May God bless you all. Amen. More round of applause, please. What is this session that we are waiting for, which is keynote presentation? Keynote presentation titled Future and Prospect of Information Management in Africa. What a great one. And it will be delivered by no other person but the special guest speaker, John Christian Montana, JD, CEO Montana and Associates, Andrew Wood, Colorado.
Mr. President, honored dignitaries, honored guests, fellow members of the Institute, welcome. I am delighted to be here again in front of you. We're gathered here today to honor new inductees to the Information Management Institute, and it gives me great pleasure to be able to speak on this occasion, not only because of the honor of meeting the inductees and our honorable guests, and of reacquainting myself with the members, but also because it gives me the opportunity to speak to you about the importance of the Institute and also its work in a world of ever-increasing complexity. We are here today a very long way from Africa and from Nigeria, where first I was inducted into this very Institute. And that fact is illustrative of the nature of the world that we live in. There was a day though, in my life when our paths probably never would have crossed and we would have done our life's work without ever having had occasion to meet or work together. But that day is gone. The information technologies which are an increasing part of our lives and our work permit us, professionals from far corners of the world, to speak to each other, to collaborate with each other, and in many ways to share our professional lives. This ceremony is but one example of it, and I can tell you that I am old enough to still be amazed by this. I was amazed to be invited to Africa, to Nigeria, for this very ceremony. I am amazed and full of wonderment yet today that we are here with the Information Management Institute of Africa in Denver, in New York. And, and, and that, is, that is wonderful indeed. Um, increasingly, however, the sharing of our lives is not optional. The world is increasingly tied together by information with ever-increasing complexity. And likewise, our dependence on that information increases. We are truly in the information age. Everything around us is pervasively full of information. Every process in our business and personal lives is fundamentally tied to the collection and management of information. We are necessarily and inextricably bound into the information that we collect and use. And we are at a point of not going back. So let's consider that information. What is, what is it? It's there, it's pervasive. But it has qualities, and, and for us in this profession, we need to think of those qualities. So what is it? First, it's an asset that we acquire at great cost through technology and systems and human efforts, um, all of which use tremendous resources. So we acquire it at great cost, and hopefully it has great value. It's a resource. Information is one of the basic building blocks, basic tools, basic ingredients of virtually everything we do in modern society. That is inescapable. It is a core component of every single great edifice that we see around us. This building, our society, our roads, our economy, wherever you may look, information is a key building block of it. It's a tool, and again, it's a fundamental tool. Without information, without well-managed information, we can do nothing in this modern age. Everything that we attempt to do necessarily requires not only information, but large quantities of information and ability to use that information. So the information must be managed. And finally, information is a weapon. We should all bear that in mind, because like any weapon, it can be used for good or for ill, 
dependent only upon the motives of the person in possession of it. If we consider information in this light, we quickly recognize that our role as information managers likewise has several facets. On its most basic level, we are stewards and custodians of this information. If it is to fulfill its many roles, it must be tended. Just like a gardener tends his garden, or a farmer tends her fields. The weeds must be plucked, the plants groomed and pruned and watered. So too, we must ensure that our information sets are well organized, pruned of the dead and useless bits that will inevitably arise, and that they are adequately protected from the many vicissitudes of the world. These basic duties are among the most important that we have. If the farmer does not attend to them, the field becomes overgrown and the crop dies. So too with, organ with information. Without careful basic management, our information becomes muddled and disorganized and ultimately useless. So whatever higher duties we may think that we have, they can never take precedence over these basic duties because if we neglect them, those higher duties and purposes may well never be achieved. However, once our garden is tended, we yet have much work to do. Every garden produces fruits, every field produces crops, and ours is no different. Our fruits are of several varieties. New insights and discoveries, new products and services, more fully informed people and institutions, and more effective and transparent government. I say that these are our fr fruits, but it is perhaps more apt to think of them as a meal that is made with our fruits. What then, if this is the meal, if these are the meals, what then are the fruits the things that allow us to bring together the ingredients to make that feast. Again, there are several. Organization. Information without organization is not information at all. It is merely a jumble, useless to everyone. Access. You can have all the food in the world, but if it is locked up and no one can partake, you will starve. So too with information. If its value is to be unlocked, it must be freely available to those who need it. Okay. Protection. Here we are as a shepherd with her flock. The world is full of wolves and lions that will steal our flock if we are careless. Right. And careless we must not be. Much of the information that we care about is very sensitive and secret to people to institutions, to society. And the wolves that would steal it will surely use it as a weapon if they can, and they have. So it is a very important part of our duties to guard these, this information. Next, preservation. Records have lives, often quite short, but sometimes quite long. It is our duty to ensure that records live their full lives partaking all the while of organization and protection and access. One need only visit a historical archive, as I very much like to do myself, to appreciate the value of retaining information appropriately as a memory of society. And in the final analysis, much information is that. It is the memory of an institution, of a civilization, of a people. And as the managers of that information, we are the custodians of that memory. Finally, disposition. If information is indeed a garden, the pulling and discarding of the dead and unproductive plants in it is an, un an integral part of the process of tending it. The challenges facing us in achieving these things or as old as civilization itself. But at the same time, 
They are fundamentally changed by the challenges unique to our time. Consider the vast quantity of information that is produced on a daily basis. Each and every day, the world generates 2,500,000 terabytes of information. That's a lot. It is a truly vast quantity, almost unimaginable in scale. And, is, and in ways that have never before been true, we are absolutely dependent upon that information. The fact that we are in this room is an artifact of that. The fact that there is electricity in the room is an artifact of that. The fact that we will receive a meal today is an artifact of that. Every single activity that we undertake in the course of our activities today is an artifact of the fact that we are utterly dependent upon the information that we collect and use. Indeed, a modern civilization is completely dependent upon the collection of information. None of the infrastructure of our society will work without these massive quantities of information. Without it, our basic infrastructure, electric power, potable water, and very other basic necessities cannot be created and delivered to us on the scales that we need. Without it, the financial systems upon which our economies depend could not exist. And indeed, most of what we in the 21st century take for granted in our lives and in our civilization and in our culture cannot exist without these vast quantities of information organized and protected and yet always available to turn the wheels of our society. This is the challenging environment into which the new inductees of this institute are now entering. This is the environment within which we who are already members face constant challenges. And it is we who must find solutions to the many and evolving issues that are part and parcel of it. I have been fortunate in that in my career, I began when records systems were still largely paper-based. And so I have had the experience of observing the amazing phenomenon that is called the information explosion. I have been there from the very beginning to its current state. That vantage point has given me the perspective to offer some advice to you who are younger and for whom the information age is always there and which you may take for granted. First, expect the unexpected. The technologies and the vast quantities of data that we now take for granted and that are absolutely pervasive every place in society, every place in the world, were completely unimaginable even a few decades ago. Again, within my professional career. How unimaginable, you may ask? Consider this. When I first entered into this profession, serious expert commentary by, by real heavyweight experts considered that there would never, ever be a need for more than 20 megabytes of storage on a computer. <laughs> and they were dead serious, friends. Imagine that, okay? Uh, 20 megabytes was considered so vast a quantity of data that, that there was, it, was, it was taken for granted that there would never be a need for more, okay? And that was only about 25 years ago. I came to this profession late in my life. Um, those who are younger, and, and, and even those of us who are older, uh, can look back on that and find that to be a very amusing thing indeed, okay? uh, because it's, it, it's quite silly. Okay? You know, the megabytes have turned into gigabytes, and gigabytes have turned into petabytes, and petabytes have turned into exabytes, and there's no end of it, as far as we can tell, right? Um, yet, and we have, we have reached no limit in our ability to collect and use these vast quantities of information. Consider, too, the form and format of this information. When I was young in this business, 
We used to make training manuals for our clients and send them printed copies. Now we make training videos and post them on YouTube. Okay. My own organization is entirely electronic. I don't own a file cabinet. I don't own a file drawer. Uh, it's entirely electronic, and it's not even on my computer. It's all in the cloud. These things were all completely unimaginable when I started in this business two and a half decades ago. And as a result of it, my employees and my colleagues are dispersed across the country. We have no office. We all work remotely because of this amazing ability to manage information in the way that we do. And again, all of this is very, very, very new. Now, this is not news to most of you. You're well aware of these things. But remember, and this is the point I want to make, all of this was completely inconceivable a few years ago. All of it was completely impossible a few years ago. All of it hadn't even been thought of 20 years ago. So although we may feel that we've reached some sort of endpoint with respect to all of this, that is almost certainly not true. In the course of your careers, and particularly those of you who are younger, there will be far more far-reaching and amazing changes and many more things that we now consider to be impossible or don't even consider at all, they're not on our radar screen, they haven't even been imagined, will become commonplace. And we as a people must be prepared for them, and you as the professionals of the future must be prepared for them. So if you were to survive and prosper in this new and ever-changing world, you must be prepared for change and be prepared to evolve with that change. You must be prepared to be among those who grasp whatever new challenges arise and formulate new and creative solutions for them. It is vitally important that you do so for reasons both personal and for the good of society and humankind. First, personal. In times of great change, there are winners and losers. The information explosion has likewise created many winners and losers in our profession. Practitioners from my early days who could not adopt to the new electronic world saw their skills become obsolete and their work and careers devalued as a result. And they have been disappearing slowly but surely from this profession, not only in this country, but in the rest of the world, supplanted by those who are more nimble, those who have newer skills. Your skills, your way of thinking, must constantly evolve and constantly grow. I cannot emphasize that to you enough. The information world is and will always remain thirsty for new and creative solutions. You can and should be amongst those who will develop them. And if you do, or rather when you do, because I have faith that you will, you will be handsomely rewarded. It is, it is truly a meritocracy out there. These challenges will inevitably come up. They will inevitably arise. And they will require great thinkers to solve them. When you are one of those thinkers, you will find that the world will reward you for your great thoughts. So do not be complacent. Learn and grow throughout your careers. Next, consider society. We are vitally dependent in virtually every aspect of our lives on information. If society is to continue to survive and prosper, there must be a new generation of professionals who will rise up to be stewards of this ocean of information. You must be among them. You must put your best efforts into helping your country, your society, your people use this information in the best possible ways for its own betterment. You owe the challenges that will face you. You will have the opportunity to be great, to be a leader. 
The world is hungry for that leadership and hungry for the innovations that new thinking, that great thinkers can provide. In becoming a member of this institute, you are marking yourself as one who has these qualities. And in becoming a member of this institute, you have the opportunity to work with many fine professionals who are themselves thinkers and leaders in this profession and who can guide you in this process. So, rise up and be your best in whatever you do. The doors of this profession will open up to you and you will be able to make a lasting mark upon the world for its betterment and improvement and for the welfare of all. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to this profession and I welcome you to this illustrious institute. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a challenging speech. Amen. And it was a speech that has really spoken to everyone. I'm sure everyone here has been touched by what he said in his speech and in his, in his keynote address. You can see that the, impo the importance of information management cannot be overemphasized. It is key to the development of the entire globe and remove information from the entire globe, what do you think is left? Nothing, absolutely nothing will be left. So you can see how important information is. And it is our duty as professionals in this field to make use of it. This is the opportunity for us. Let's embrace this great opportunity and excel in this profession. As he said, the entire world is looking at you. The entire world is looking at me. What effort am I going to make? What effort are you going to make? Are you going to be the one that will wipe tears from people's faces? Are you going to be the one that will take this globe, this whole entire world, to the next level? Yes, we are. Can't we do it? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. God helping us. Give yourself another round of applause for that. So the next item we have here is the, in fact, there is something I forgot to say about the guest, the special guest speaker. We were inducted the same day in Nigeria. That was in November 2016. Am I right? That is it. So we are colleagues. <laughs> I'm proud to be your colleague. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. So the next item that we have here will be done by station by Ambassador Dr. Yedokun Ayodeji. Thank you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to spend the next couple of minutes um, trying to understand why we're being inducted today. And um, the reason why this institute has to be in place. The Institute of Information Management, like we've heard, is the premier professional institute in Africa. Uh, we're proud to say that um, ever since we started, um, we've been able to uh, penetrate into different uh, regions and um, the level of acceptance has really been encouraging. Yeah. Um, like you know, I'm Dr. Edukam, the President, Chairman, and Governor Council of the Institute. I'm a computer professional. I've been in the IT and industry for over two decades now. I've worked um, within the oil and gas sector for almost 15 years. Um, I'm on 
the social media platform, you can actually get a summary of my profile on my LinkedIn account. Uh, why Institute of Information Management? We say that every business or program must address well-defined objectives which will add value either directly to the bottom line or towards the achievements of the organization's goal and objectives. IM objectives usually fall into one of three categories. For any organization to you know, promote uh, efficiency in service provision, information management is very important, it's very key. And also, for any organization that wants to ensure that they are profitable in their endeavors and they want to avoid being exposed to what we refer to as information risk, then information management is the way to go. Then talking about social, moral, ethic, and legal responsibilities of any organization or government, uh, before that can be achieved, then proper information management has to be in place. That is, there has to be information governance in place. Then information management program must manage organizational information so, as, so that it is timely. Information that is not timely might not be able to help the organization to achieve whatever, uh, whatever objective they are actually out to. Then it has to be accurate, it has to be complete, cost effective, it has to be accessible and it has to be useful. Because the information you have, just like uh, Mr. Montana mentioned in his presentation, if you have information and you cannot access such information as at when needed, then the need for having that information will have been defeated. So accessibility is very key without compromising security. So better information at the right time makes better business. So we as information management professionals, we are special, we are important, and we are needed in every facet of life. And that is what makes this profession, you know, very important and the need for government, individuals and organizations to pay the necessary attention to information management. Then, the Professional Institute is developed to control the creation and growth of records and information. That is, we are going to be helping governments, individuals and organizations to ensure that information is properly managed. Uh, when we're talking about information management, we talk about the information life cycle. That is, we talk about information as at the point at which information is being created, or at the point at which information is being captured, um, the point at which it's being classified, stored, and um, assessed, and ultimately disposed. So that is very important. And in Africa, this is something that is grossly missing in so many countries and organizations. So the need to manage the information life cycle is very, very key and very, very important. And that is why this institute was set up to help develop standards, specifications, procedures, policies that would help organizations to be able to adhere to whatever outline processes that they have in place. Then it also set up to help improve efficiency and productivity. It's definitely going to be difficult for any organization to be effective and also to improve in productivity in a situation where information is not accessible or is not even available. Then um, assimilate new records management technologies. We are also going to help to sensitize the populace, talking about the trends when it comes to uh, those technologies that you know are evolving in managing records and information because IIM is going to be like a hub where professionals, government individuals will come to and they have actually been coming to us. We've been helping a lot of government, a lot of individuals when it comes to meeting their information needs. Then also ensure regulatory compliance. Uh, when we talk about information management compliance, this is um, regulatory requirements, you know, in Africa is still coming up. And as a professional institute, we're encouraging government, you know, to enact laws, to enact regulations that would help to manage information, that would help to protect information. Like on the 25th of this month, 
uh, Europe, they are going to be having the implementation of the new data protection um, uh, thing. And, you know, Africa, we need to wake up and also try to have something, you know, in that light that would really help to make sure that information, data that are being gathered are properly managed, they are actually used for the purpose or purposes for which they are being acquired. Then also minimize litigation risk. Um, like um, Mr. Montana earlier said, that information is a weapon. It's a weapon and it depends on the custodian. It could be used positively and it could also be used negatively. So, as a professional institute, we want to ensure that individuals, governments, are, uh, you know, uh, they, they have the level of awareness, you know, that will help them, that will guide them when it comes to managing information so that they don't unnecessarily expose themselves, the organization or the government, to information risk. Then, we talk about safeguarding vital information. A number of times, you find organizations, you know, mixing up different kinds of information, those that are of mineral in nature, those that are vital, important, and so on and so forth. There is need for information to be properly classified. When you know those information that are vital within your organization, then you're able to put in place the right equipment, the right infrastructures, the right policies, the right processes in place that will ensure that those information are properly captured they are properly stored and they are retained for the period they are supposed to be kept according to the law. Then, support better management decision. Uh, it's definitely going to be difficult for any organization uh, you know, to make quality decisions when access to quality information is not guaranteed. So the Institute of Information Management, this is part of what we're trying to achieve by ensuring that you know, we develop professionals we certify them and we expose them to the latest trend that would ensure that the kind of data that will be used by the organization are those data that are complete, they are accurate, they are data that are reliable, they are data that can actually be used you know, in achieving whatever objective is set up by the organization. Then also preserve corporate memory. This is very key because in my own part of the world, where I come from in Africa, uh, something is, uh, there is this particular area that I think we need to work on, which has to do with our heritage, our tradition, our culture, our languages. You know, they have been eroded these days because you only find some of our children, you know, speak a local dialect. It becomes an issue, you know. And if care is not taken, it's just a matter of time. You will find out that. Uh, our children won't, in the next 10, 15 years to come, might find it difficult to speak a local dialect. Then for us to be able to preserve all those heritages, you know, the institute is set up to help put in place all that will be required. Then also foster professionalism in running business and ultimately to help reduce operating costs. Every organization wants to make sure that they achieve the highest, you know, in terms of revenue. They want to cut down on the operating costs. They want to make sure that they, are, they run a profitable business or businesses. So, and the only way you can ensure that this can be possible is by making sure that you have information governance in place. In quite a number of organizations, you can see the um, pictures on the screen, you know, they are faced with um, managing storage, you know, managing physical documents, um, that, you'll agree with me, is going to be an impediment into uh, ensuring that the organization is, able, uh, is being run as expected. Then, as a professional institute, we have four core values. We have four core values, and the very first one is standards. We need to, uh, as a professional institute, we want to ensure that in Africa, that we're able to develop um, standards, when it comes to managing information, because this is conspicuously missing in the African continent. In America, we have the DOD 5015. In Europe, we have the MOREC. And in other parts of the world, in Australia, and so on and so forth, 
there are standards when it comes to managing records and information. But in Africa today, we don't have any um, standards that we can say this is homegrown uh, standards that we can actually that can actually help us in managing records. And um, as a professional institute, we are working on that and trying to look at various sectors of the economy. Uh, we have the HIPAA uh, regulation for the health sector in the U.S. We don't have that in Africa. We see that as a challenge on us. You know, these are some of the things we need to identify: the various sectors, the engineering discipline, the health, the education, and so on and so forth, and help them develop standards when it comes to how information is being collected, how information is being classified, how information is being stored, how information is being disseminated, and for how long information should be kept in some of these uh, sectors. Then we talk about certifications. So we have quite a number of disciplines when we talk about information management, quite a number of them, a whole lot of them. And uh, one thing that is missing is also certification. Even globally, I think it's really, really scarce when it comes to core records and information management certifications. We have the, the likes of AMA International, we have AIM, we have the IRMS in the UK, and we still think that in Africa, we also need to evolve and come up with some of the certifications that would help you know, develop the competency level of information management professionals. Then we now have competence. We want to ensure that Individuals that are charged with the responsibilities of managing records and information in organizations are competent. Uh, several years back, we conducted a survey and we realized the fact that a number of people that are charged with managing corporate assets that we refer to as information are not trained, they are not certified. Some of them don't even know why they're doing what they are doing. You know, they don't know the processes, they don't know the procedures, they don't know, you know, the ethics guiding, you know, management of information, information dissemination, information sharing, uh, preservation of information, and for even how long information should be stored. So you can see this is a huge gap that the Institute is out to bridge. Then lastly, the Institutes of Information Management strongly believe in research, and this is one area that you know, it's continuous because we believe that we need to evolve when it comes to research and be able to find solutions to so many problems confronting the information management industry. So talking about the Institute of Information Management is a professional membership-driven institute. This institute was conceived in 2010 by the Records and Information Management Awareness Foundation, the RIMA Foundation. Because there is no way we can mention IIM today without recourse to RIMA Foundation. We started RIMA Foundation in 2004, and the sole aim for establishing RIMA then was to help to sensitize the populace. When I say the populace, we mean individuals, governments, and um, organizations in the area of the need for them to make sure that information within their enterprise are properly managed. So we started with awareness campaigns, seminars, roadshows, you know, conferences, um, and so on and so forth. And along the line, we discover a number of gaps. You know, talking about the information management industry, quite a number of professionals we came across then, you know, a number of them told us, some will tell you, we've been in the field of information management, archives management, uh, library and information system, knowledge management, uh, content management, um, document control, document management, records management, and so on and so forth. And that organizations hardly you know, recognize them as professionals. So if you look at the mission and vision statement of the institute, you notice the fact that we're emphasizing on institutionalizing information management. You know, Ensuring that governments and individuals see information managers as professionals, you know, in their fields. And I also accorded that recognition when it comes to job placements, when it comes to promotion, when it comes to ensuring that certain portfolios are created at the management level for individuals that are charged with managing information in organizations. Then um, the institutes, 
Um, our goal is to also make sure that we provide, um, you know, our membership with objective insights and guidance on their career path and technology options. Like I said earlier on, you know, we assist individuals and governments, uh, you know, to resolve information management challenges. When they come to us, we provide them solutions that are not biased, you know, vendor neutral solution. Then uh, the institute is um, accredited by the Federal Ministry of Education in Nigeria with the consent of the Attorney General of the Federation and it is duly registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission in Nigeria. Talking about um, what we offer, we offer the best of the best in terms of certification and we are proud to say that in the whole wide world there isn't any information management certification that is as comprehensive as the Institute of Information Management Professional Certification. So what does this certification entail? It has four levels. We have the first three compulsory levels, the IMP one. IMP is an abbreviation or acronym for Information Management Professional. So the first stage is IMP one. Individual professionals are expected to complete five modules you know, before they can progress to IMP2. And in the context of IIM, a module is a subject area. For example, knowledge management is a module. Information security is a module. Information technology is a module. Business process is a module. Project management is a module, and so on. So you have to complete um, five modules at the first stage. Then the next stage, also five modules. And the third stage, five modules, making 15 modules. So, at the last module, which is the master certification module, professionals are expected to pick one out of the 15 modules they have completed at the IMP1, IMP2, and IMP3 for the master certification. Just because of space and time, we've only decided you know, to list out three of them here. We have the Certified Records and Information Management Professional Certification, CRIMP. We have that of health information management, document management, information security, and GIS. Then we have the general certification. The general certification is developed by the Institute of Information Management and it's first of its kind anywhere in the world. Because the advent of technology today has exposed us all to information risk. We all have telephones. We use the internet. We do so many things with technology these days. And those information that are not properly managed, that are not properly tamed, once they get out of our hands, then we no longer have control. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So it is pertinent for professionals, regardless of their discipline, regardless of what they do, you know, to have basic information management skills. So that when it comes to handling information, you know, they are able to handle them appropriately. When it comes to sharing information, they know what they are to share and what they are not supposed to share. When it comes to storing information, they know those information that should be stored and those that they shouldn't store. When it comes to retention of those information, they should know for how long they are expected, you know, to store those information. And when it comes to the use of technology, we also believe that they should have basic knowledge in handling and using some of these technologies that we have around us. A lot of people invest in mobile phones, iPads, computers, and so on and so forth. But when it comes to the skill, or the skills required in using some of these things, we don't take our time you know, to study them and to know how to use them appropriately. So the GINC certification is actually developed to help individuals you know, to overcome those challenges. So what is it all about is a general certification you know, developed by the institute, targeted at all levels of employees in every organization. Then it is aimed at promoting the awareness of information across board. So whether you are a core information management professional or not, in any given organization, you are expected you know, to have this certification. Then it's also developed to assist employees understand the basics of what information management is, including their roles and responsibilities, you know, in the process of information creation, storage, usage, sharing, and disposition. So we all should know our roles when it comes to the information life cycle. Then employee
What is it all about? It's about employee education on how to better manage both personal and corporate information, that is, data privacy and protection. Finally, the ultimate aim of the certification is to assist individuals and organizations to understand and also imbibe best practices when it comes to, you know, mitigating information risk and handling of sensitive information within the organization. So what does it entail? Education and certification of employees on information management are attending and passing prescribed examination after pre-examination training, the renewal of certification after three years. Uh, the beauty of the GILT certification is the fact that if you are a non-information management core professional, you are not expected to write the exam. You only attend the class and you get a certificate of attendance. But if you are a computer scientist or a core information management professional, you are expected to write a test and also pass. Then you get a certificate of attendance and you also get the certification proper. Then talking about the uh, membership grade, the Institute of Information Management actually has a number of membership categories. The very first one on the screen is student membership. Uh, which is targeted at students that are still in school. Um, graduate uh, membership for fresh graduates that just left the university. Um, the associate membership is for any professional in any field, in any discipline that has a minimum of two years of post-graduation experience. That is for grad, uh, associates. The professional membership grade is targeted at any individual in any field, in any discipline, within any sector that has a minimum of five years of professional experience. Senior professional grade is for professionals with minimum of 10 years of um, experience. The fellow of the institute is targeted at professionals with minimum of 15 years of professional experience with some other requirements. Then the corporate um, category is targeted at any legal entity that is registered. Then the highest Membership grade in the institute is the honorary fellow or fellowship, which is not stated here. Uh, the honorary fellowship is uh, bestowed on um, senior citizens, chief executives, people that are not into the field of information management, people that have influenced and have a positive impact in the society. These are the kind of people that the institute recognizes when it comes to you know, the confinement of the honorary fellowship. Then in terms of affiliation and partnership, the Institute of Information Management is proud to say that we are affiliated to the best of the best across the globe. We have the Information and Records Management Society, a foremost society in the United Kingdom. Um, we are always proud you know, to be associated with them, and each time they are also always very proud to call the IIM, their sister organization. I think we deserve a round of applause. For that. <laughs> then we have Information Matters in the UK, Information Governance Conference by the Information Governance Initiative in the United States of America. They are also our partners. We have the PECB in Canada. Um, they are into ISO certifications. And the Information Requirement Clearance also in the, in the United States. The International Association of Privacy Professional, Professionals is equally in the United States. We have the International Records Management Trust in the UK, Online Business School, and quite a number of them that space and time will not allow us to list on the screen. The individual benefits when it comes to IIM, IIM membership include validating your information management knowledge, skills, and what practices. There are quite a number of professionals that have been in the field for decades. And when it comes to validating you know, all the skills and experiences they've gathered over the years, the IIM platform provides that opportunity. There's also opportunity to enroll for the Institute Professional Examination and Certification. Then as a professional, you become more engaged. If you are into private practices, if you are working for an organization, you can be rest assured that the IM platform is really going to get you engaged because we've got quite a number of uh, projects, we've got quite a number of gaps that we're trying to bridge in the information management field. And we need you as professionals 
to be involved. And as a result of that, we have the community of experts, you know, that specializes in different areas when it comes to information management. And being inducted today, you have the opportunity of belonging into where you think you rightfully belong. Then increase your confidence and ability to do the job. You know, as a professional, like I mentioned earlier on, quite a number of people, most especially in Africa, that are charged with managing information, do not really know what it entails. So IIM membership will guarantee that and make sure that you have the necessary skills and knowledge that will give you the confidence, you know, to be able to stand up any day, any time, to, you know, live up to the expectations. Then you also have the opportunity to learn best practices and lessons learned from the best in the industry. Just like Mr. Montana said, you know, in our midst we have, we, we, we're just too blessed because we have professionals across the globe, people that have been around for decades, people that are experienced, people that have executed major capital projects in different sectors of the economy, you know, as a professional coming on board as a member, you have the opportunity of fraternizing with them, learning from them, you know, sharing lessons learned and also best practices. Then you also get recognition for the qualification and experience, expertise, ability, and everything you've acquired over the years, you know, while working maybe for an organization and so on. Then you also have the opportunity to remain current and competitive, get on in your career and earn more money, gain more respect. Information management profession is needed virtually, you know, in all organizations. And um, having that skills, you know, makes, gives you a competitive advantage. Because if not for the, um, the drop in the crude um, price, you know, uh, we used to have a number of oil and gas firms in Nigeria, you know, executing different major capital projects. And, you know, to our surprise, this has led to the employment of information management professionals because they need information management professionals to help set up the information systems on projects and also to help manage project-related documents. And that is where you have the document control coming into play. Then you also get the transferable credentials. We partner with universities and other institutions you know, to offer this to our members. Then you join the community of professionals and network with peers. You have the opportunity of networking with people across the globe. And you use the institute acronym, depending on your membership grade. After your induction today, after your name, then you are authorized to use these acronyms at the back of your name. So if you write out your name, then you put the appropriate acronym at the back. Then if you uh, also attempted and also passed the institute certification, you also had that acronym at the back of your name. That is, if you passed IMP1, then, and you're a fellow member, you put FIIM, comma, the IMP1, and so on and so forth. Then enjoy membership discounts on local and international training and share with the He has really spoken. He has told us what Institute of Information Management Africa is about, from Genesis to Revelation. You will all agree with me. He has told us. On behalf of the Government Council, management, and staff of the Institute of Information Management Africa, I hereby present this special award to Mr. John Montana. Uh, this award is a special award, Volunteer of the Year Award, which was uh, presented in absentia on the 17th of March in Lagos. Uh, we have the honor and privilege to represent this award to you. Congratulations, sir. speechless, but I, I am a little bit speechless. Uh, this is a great honor. I'm extremely flattered. Um, uh, it, it really is an honor and a privilege to be uh, a
part of this organization and to participate in its activities. Um, and, and the fact that the Information Management Institute of Africa has reached out to the rest of the world gives us an opportunity to, to collaborate and to understand each other uh, and to further global understanding and global coordination of these very important activities. So this award is a symbol of all of that and I accept it in that spirit. It, it is truly a great honor and truly a great symbol of the potential that our collaboration and our working together represents. Thank you. Thank you. In the region of ASEAN of MFM USC, that's Martin of Fire and a Miracle Ministry. Then Pastor Vincent to make by lead pastor, Redeemed Christian Church of God, Day Spring Center, coordinating pastor of all redeemed churches in Colorado. What a great job. Let's give him one time. Thank you both of you, sir. They are all men of God. And I know God has really used you to help people, the needy, the poor the motherless, the fatherless, the poorest of the poor. Thank you. This is the official induction of the Honorary Fellows of the Institute of Information Management, USA Chapter. Um, you are expected to say after me, I, I Filling your names. Vincent Omega. Male or female? Male. Male. Currently of? Mountain of Fire Ministry, California. Consensus Group Incorporated, United States of America. Do we have consent? Do we have consent? consent? To be an honorary fellow. To be an honorary fellow. Member of the Institute of Information Management. Member of the Institute of Information Management. With effects from the dates with effect from the fifth day of May 2018. Henceforth, do solemnly swear, henceforth do solemnly swear, and affirm, and affirm that I will be faithful, that I will be faithful, and bear true allegiance, and bear true allegiance to the institute, to the institute, that as an honorary fellow, of the Institute of Information Management, of Institute of Information Management, I will try to preserve. The fundamental, objectives the fundamental objectives and directives, and directives are stipulated, are stipulated in, the constitution of the institute in the constitution of the institute that I will not allow my personal interest or any form of sentiment to influence my official conduct or my official decisions that I will, to the best of my ability, Preserve, Preserve, protect, protect and, defend the and defend the constitution of the institute, of the institute. That, I will abide that I will abide by the code of conduct, the code of, conduct of, the of the institute, that in all circumstances, in all circumstances I will do what is right, I will do what is right according, to the law, according to the law, without fear, without fear or, favor, or favor, that I will devote myself, will devote myself to the service, to the service and well-being of the professional practice of information management at all times. I therefore pray to God to enable me hold on unto this oath always. So help me God. Amen. As the President, Chairman, Governing Council of the Institute of Information Management, I hereby confide on you, Honorary Fellow of the Institute, congratulations. This program, light 
basically on her and her team. God has used that to make today a great day for us. So let's give her a round of applause. Then the next person, Reverend Christopher Williams. This is the official induction of the professional fellows of the IIM United States Charter. Uh, you say after me, I, I your name, Christopher male or female, male. currently of Do you have a consent to be a fellow member with the Institute of Information Management with effects from the fifth day of May 2018? Henceforth, do solemnly swear and affirm that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Institute. That as a fellow of the Institute of Information Management, I will strive to preserve the fundamental objectives and directives as stipulated in the Constitution of the Institute. That I will not allow my personal interest or any form of sentiment to influence my official conduct or my official decisions that I will, to the best of my ability, to preserve to preserve, protect, protect, and defend the constitution of the institute. The constitution of the institute. That, I will abide that I will abide by the code of conduct by the code of, conduct of, the of the institute. That in all circumstances, in all circumstances I will do, I will do what, is right what is right according to the law, according to the law without, fear without fear or favor. Or favor. That I will devote myself, I will devote myself, to, myself to the service, to the service and well-being well of the professional practice of, professional practice of information, management, of information at management at all times. I therefore pray to God, pray to, God to enable me hold on, me hold on. This, oath this oath always. So help me God. So help me God. Amen. 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 By the power confided on me as the president and chairman of the Governing Council of the Institute of Information Management. I hereby admit you all as professional members of the Institute. Congratulations. Reverend Christopher Williams. Bukola A. Oyedoku. Francisca Opara. Thank you. D.A. Graham. Mm -hmm. 
putting the man's head. So let's give her a great applause. Thank you, man. Then Dr. Patrick Ogo. Ola, Kiri Ola. Don't try to do it. Come there. Mr. Courage. Dr. Courage, I'm sorry. Dr. Fellow Courage. So if the picture doesn't go out on time, don't just not put it again. Dr. Afebwemen. A little bit blurry, a little bit. In fact, this is a gathering of doctors. Yes. <laughs> yes. Congratulations to you all. Filling your names. Currently off. To address you. Do you have a consent to be a senior professional member with the Institute of Information Management with effects from 5th day of May 2018? As for, I pledge to assert and discharge the responsibilities allotted to me at all times as information manager with integrity and observe those standards and practices that will be determined from time to time by the Standards Committee of the Institute of Information Management with a promise to give professional opinion with absolute objectivity and respect the codes of other institutes relevant to their responsibilities. Two, have regard for the well-being of the society, respect the confidentiality of information receivable in the course of my duty while acting loyally and honestly in carrying out information management responsibilities in any organization where I'm engaged. Three, I understand that the Institute of Information Management reserve the right to summarily terminate my membership if I violate any of the above, which were made out of my own free will. I thereby pray to God to enable me hold on to this oath always. So help me God. Amen. By the power and authority conferred on me as the President, Chairman, and Governor Council of the Institute of Information Management, IIM Africa, I ever admit you as senior professional members. Congratulations.
then Kanzi Florence. And finally, three, two, one, and see if I just touch it. Just touch it. Just touch it. Congratulations. Touch it again. Two, three. So instead of congratulations, everyone. It's taking too long to go off when you're waiting for it. That's why I said touch the button again. Okay. It's just going to disappear. <laughs> It's not just something that it's not something that we take lightly at all. Uh, we believe that integrity, which is key to information management and information sharing and information storing and all of that, is something that is very, very well founded and grounded in the Bible. So I thank us so much for coming, Ambassador. I thank you so much. Um, when uh, Kemi told me that. This was going to be done. I said, no, 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 Kami, you know, I just want to serve from the background. I want to, I don't want, because we've been raised in that, uh, in that spirit for us to serve without being seen. Uh, but I thank you so very much. And I thank you, uh, Mr. Montana. We just shared a few things that, uh, that gladdens my heart. He, he's, he has the same desire to see the legal profession in Nigeria uh, get digitized and uh, the, the court systems. I practiced law in Nigeria for 16 years before I went into full-time ministry and I know the challenges that we have in retrieving information and sometimes you can be in court and the, the judge is looking for uh, one of the documents that was supposed to be filed or to have been filed and things like that. So I thank you for your heart for Africa and I thank you for your heart for Nigeria. And I believe that so many other things are going to come out of this relationship that will lead to uh, uh, greater things for our continent and especially for our nation, Nigeria. And I want to thank all of the inductees who have flown in from different parts of the, of the country. Um, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that you are only going to be here for just a few hours. We wish you could be here for a week for us to show you the true Colorado hospitality. Uh, the most beautiful cities and beautiful uh, holiday resorts are up in the mountains. You're only going to have a glimpse of them today because four, five, six hours is not enough to, for you to explore the beauty of our, our state of Colorado. And um, I also want to thank especially uh, Councilwoman uh, Angela Lawson. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we're, we're trying to get the mayor to be there himself. Please, let's have our mayor, the mayor of uh, uh, Aurora in our prayers, because he's going through some challenges right now. Not political, but some health issues. Uh, we just want you to have him in, our, in your prayers, uh, that he will come out of it uh, safe. Uh, we also want to thank uh, uh, Bishop Potter. Bishop Potter, I just shared with him that this was going to happen in the last 48 hours. I said, hey, Bishop, all I need for you to do is to pray for me. He said, my son, if this is something that glorifies God that is going to come in here. He is 82 years old. Wow. He's been in ministry for f over 55 years. And um, his physical abilities are not very as good as they used to be. But he, he came here and uh, he, has, he has just left here a while ago. 
and Dr. Chipman, uh, also a woman who is one of the most respected educationists in the country. And also raise up the challenge of hosting the next induction ceremony in your location. So Dr. Franker, we're coming to Dallas. Dr. Patrick, we're coming to Atlanta. Dr. Adeleke, Philadelphia. Dr. Innocent, we're looking forward to you all inviting us. Dr. Courage, Las, um, Los Angeles, so we would love to have you host us there so we can all fly in. Um, thank you all so much. Um, you will all soon be um, um, designated into your individual groups because uh, the induction ceremony group was just a temporary group so that we can facilitate this ceremony. You're all going to now start getting the invitation into your fellow groups and any other designates. So expect that, don't reject it. And I bless you all. I pray that God will take you back to your various locations in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. observe. On behalf of myself and the newly senior professional inducted today, and we wish to express our gratitude, um, more especially to Dr. Ambassador Dr. Edeko, God bless you so much for this opportunity that is given to us. Um, to me, I'm so overwhelmed. I tell you, my children are already watching me. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Yeah. 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 They already started sending me message already. Um, I remember when I came to the institution a few months back, I already planned my vacation to U.S. And I heard that this induction is going to be taking place in the U.S. at this time. And I said, I'll queue into it. Hi, I'll stay extra one week in the U.S. And uh, I'm so excited to be part of this. Like um, the suggestion I gave yesterday, if we can actually take this out of our comfort zone to start training people outside, it's going to cost us our time our resources, but I tell you what, at the end of the day, we're going to enjoy it sure. because we have institutions calling us to come and train your personnel. Business. Information management, I tell you, is the key to every organization. If you don't have information management, you have nothing. I'll give you an example. Some of our projects we run in ExxonMobil, and NPC came up and said they want to do value for money audits. Projects that are like 15 years old because information management have not come true as at that time. Mm -hmm. But today we are doing well, we are doing better, and people are beginning to appreciate the need for information management in every organization. So I would really, really appreciate if we can go back and, uh, as a person, we'll go back to Nigeria and start selling this. So you can, you'll see, uh, start getting calls, uh, emails. And in addition, that really we want to be part of this. And I'm also excited because when I go back to Nigeria, I start taking some of the certifications. So you'll be ready for me. I'll be better on your next person. <laughs> With that, I take care of each and everyone else that have come here. I didn't know it's going to be such an event. I would have come with my family. <laughs> they would have loved to bet. Anyway, I look forward to being inducted into the fellow group. And that time, I'm, I know I'll have a bunch of people come with me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Congratulations everyone, congratulations, I wish you all the best and I pray God will help you to move this great institute to the next level we are all giving us, God helping you. Now it's time for many things. Menu, menu, menu. We are ever proud of you. May God renew your strength. 